Hey goats, my name is David Keegan. I think I talked, uh, taught something to you just once there back at the start of the year. Uh, just one little lecture. I used to do a lot more lectures, so my apologies. You're going to be coming into introduction to clinical practice and you don't really know who I am as a teacher. I'm sorry about that. But anyways, it's still going to be a great time. Now this year we've got a bit of a funny wrinkle. Uh, and bizarrely, the Yukon is responsible for it. So both myself and another major teacher in the course we misunderstood the, the exact timing, and so uh, uh, neither of us are around on the very first day of the course. So what we're doing instead for your class for this year is we're creating a bunch of online resources to help you get started on that first day. So that first day you have a one hour off, which is, that was used to be the orientation and introduction and so on to the course, and we would talk about how to document notes and all that kind of stuff. Now instead, you can show up at 9.30 because we're going to give those things to you that you can look at online. And some of you, you've already, you know, you're old hats here in the clinical world and maybe you don't even need much of this training. So you can just glance at those things and, and get ready for the small groups and so on. So the days, the, the course is going to start off great with Dr. Lauren Zanussi, who you will get to know in greater detail in Course 7. And, he, and he's talking about how to uh, interview a potentially aggressive patient. And because this whole course is about two things your safety as a clinical learner, and patient safety. And everything in this course is all about that. So parts of it are going to be about keeping you safe, such as you know, how to talk to a potentially aggressive patient, and how to improve patient safety, which includes things like how do you work within a healthcare team with other healthcare professionals? What if you have conflict? How do you write notes and documentation in a careful way? How can you work as a team to deal with people who are uh, you know, potentially critically ill in either trauma or non-trauma settings. This course is great. I love being the chair. I've been the chair of this course and it can, has continued to change based upon your feedback or more precisely the feedback of your predecessors. We've now got it to the point where it's really focused on being around the things that you need, things that are going to help you thrive. This course should help you connect with how you felt on that first day when you heard you were getting into medical school, when you opened up that email, that same incredible joy and pride and vigor and challenge and the excitement of it all, in case you've lost it a little bit along the way over this past year, I promise you, you're going to get it back in this course. Because this course is hands-on, it's immersive, you're going to learn things, you're going to be dealing with tons and tons of simulation, all sorts of hands-on things, it's great. I'm really excited for you. And we're also taking care of you. Everybody, every one of you watching this video in the GOAT class, you're all going to have a three-day weekend and you're all going to have either a four-day weekend or a five-day weekend. Now we've done this as a combination of some opportunities that arise on the calendar uh, with scheduling of Canada Day and so on and also just to help give you a bit of time to get back to being yourself in case you've kind of gotten a bit overburdened with studying and so on to this point in time. We recognize that we, for you to be successful as you go off into your summertime electives and other in your future clinical training periods in clerkship and so on, you need to be rested and you need to be well. And so that's why this course is set up that way. So you're going to have two generous weekends and as a course chair, I'm thrilled. And I can tell you we have the 100% support of the UME leadership to do this. Now, your predecessors have been very clear. They were given a choice. Do we A, bring an exam into ICP, or B, make the sessions mandatory? And year after year, they have always said B, mandatory. And the thing is, we've got to do one or the other. We can't, we can't have no exam and not mandatory. We can't. I'm not allowed. So given those two choices, your predecessors have always picked make it mandatory even when there was a time when I was hankering to get an exam. So with mandatory sessions, it means you have to show up for the large group sessions as well and sign in. We will be checking. Please don't have us discover after the fact that you didn't show up to a session. That makes it more difficult for us and frankly, more difficult for you. If you're gonna miss a session for any important reason, there's a process around that and you would contact you and me using the established processes about getting an absence. You probably discussed with Dr. Bush. We actually have a whole bunch of scenarios set up so that if you have to miss sessions, what you need to do to make up that time. Because some of the material that we cover, you might not think is incredibly relevant 
But I can tell you after the fact, when people do their electives and then come back to say, whoa, I never expected I was gonna be in this crazy conflict. And I suddenly was in this crazy conflict with my preceptor. I'm so glad we had that teaching. And if it happens, you don't need that conflict teaching, yay, I'm thrilled for you. But you will at some point in the future be dealing with some sort of conflict scenarios in healthcare, I can promise you, unfortunately. So every session is mandatory. And when I say every, it's every session is mandatory. And of course, in case anybody was tempted to sign their friends in or something, just please don't do that. That becomes a much greater issue of professionalism that's academic misconduct. That has very serious rules if you read them up in the calendar, which are, I won't get into the, the, the disciplinary actions, but they are the worst possible. So don't sign your colleagues in, just sign yourself in. And if you're late for a session, just let us know. At always, if there's any questions at all, at all about the course, please email intro at ucalgary.ca. There's the email, intro at ucalgary.ca. Because Shannon Kayer or whoever's covering for her will be able to answer your questions and make sure that you get through this on track. Now you do have to get a couple of things in. You do have to pass hand washing. Now that may sound crazy, but I can tell you every year there's a couple of people who get close to failing. But don't worry, if you get a second chance in real time in the hand washing session, and if even then you still don't pass, don't worry, we can get you back for remedial hand washing. Now to be truthful, we've never had anybody need to have remedial hand washing. And I don't know if you want to know that you are the one person who had to have remedial hand washing. But if you want it, it's there for you for sure. And uh, we'll create a separate session. It will interrupt your, your final three day weekend though, if you do need remedial hand washing or likely will interrupt it because everything else is so tightly scheduled. The other thing you have to hand in is proof, and I mean proof, printed off proof. It can't be showing a screen or anything. It has to be a printed off proof that you have completed the AHS Medication Reconciliation Module. And there's parts in that module that, you know, you might think, well, that's obvious or whatever, and that's okay, that's great. But we want to make sure that everybody is up to speed with medication reconciliation. This is important because Patients may sometimes be taking different medications than what's showing on neck care. Patients may sometimes be, you know, taking additional stuff that's off the shelf. And now there's more stuff off the shelf than back when I was a medical student. So you can be taking pretty high powered anti-inflammatory drugs that can cause ulcers and GI bleeds. And they're completely non-prescription nowadays, you know, uh, at least uh, uh, the medium doses. And so it's important to do me medication reconciliation to check the drug dosages, you know, show the pills to the patients, sorry, these blue pills, are these ones that you're taking twice a day or is it these other ones and so on. Calling the pharmacist, doing all you can to make sure that you've got the best possible medication history. And so we're not gonna teach you this in, in a classroom because this is just really straightforward, going through the rules and showing you how to do it. You, you don't wanna spend your daytime doing that, but, but you do need to, over the course of the course, do it. Now, here's a tip. Just do this right away. You might even want to do it in the weekend before the course starts and just get it done. And trust me, you don't want to be on a plane to your electives and you've forgotten to give your certificate for the medication reconciliation because it's just going to tie you up now in more emails and potentially some meetings and so on. Just get it done, get it done early, even though it's not due until the second week of the course. Okay? So, uh, welcome to ICP. It's going to be lots of fun. Last year's group, the Humus, they called it camp for medical students. And you know what? That's what it feels like. It's totally awesome for camp and it's going to be a great day. We've got team trauma, simulation, all sorts of great stuff that's going to connect you with really great clinical reasoning, clinical skill development, teamwork development. It's great. I can't wait to meet you. I'll be there on the Tuesday of the first week. Uh, that's a team trauma day. I'll be coming around saying hello to a bunch of you and you'll be seeing me throughout the course. So thanks very much. Great to see you. I hope you have a great lot of fun and I'm going to leave you with one question. I want you to think about what you want to happen as a result of going through your clinical electives or your electives. What do you want to happen as a result of going through your clinical training, including clerkship? You know, and so you might have some ideas about, well, you know, improve as being a doctor or whatever. And it's okay to even think about some things about like, well, you want to sort of like, you know, uh, be able to build a reputation to help you with CARMs and so on. And that's all fine. But I want you to think about it deeply personally. Take five minutes now 
and think about it and write it down on a piece of paper and put that in your wallet or in a purse or in your backpack or your messenger bag or take a picture and put that on your phone. But I want you to write it by hand on real paper with a real pen or a real pencil and then have a record of that somewhere. And we're going to be talking about that during the course. So see you soon. Intro to clinical practice, my favorite course of all time.